Welcome to part three of Observable Explorations. In this episode, we use the observable a little more. You might remember last time we had a main view connected to an observable model. This time, we're going to create some distance between the view and the observable property in the model. So to begin with, here's the model. We marked it as observable, that was our Swift macro, and had to import observation, and we had a single property, count, which was an int. We also had a method that when the button was tapped, we used it to increase the count, so the count was incremented by one, and then the observable meant that that new value was presented out to the view. The view directly used this model. Main view had a state property, which was called model, and model's increase count was called as the button action, and we got the observable count to tell us when model.count.description needed to be updated. And this ran perfectly like this. This time, we're going to insert a controller between the model and the view. You're going to want to stop me and say, hey, wait a minute, something's wrong. Just let's see how it goes for a moment. Let's create a struct, the controller. And I know you question whether it should be a struct, but let's just go with it. And let's connect the controller to the model, and we'll let the model be a let. In addition, if the view is going to be connected to our controller, we need to provide the method for the button action, and so we have increase count that just turns around and asks the model to increase count. And similarly, I need a way to reflect the value. Our model is private, and so I have a computed property called current value, which is a string, which just takes the model's count and asks for its description. So let's connect the main view to the controller. And what's kind of surprising is it's going to work even though controller's a struct, controller is not observable. In main view, let's change our state property to controller and create an instance of the controller. The controller, remember, has a private instance of model. And so our button's action is now asking the controller to increase count, and the text is asking the controller for its current value. This is the magic bet. It's kind of astounding. Controller doesn't change. Controller can't change. Controller's model doesn't change. So let's look at the definition of current value. In controller, current value returns a string. It's that computed property that depends on model.count. And because it depends on model.count, this is the magic that we learned last time with this with observation tracking on change. It's as if model.count is the property we're watching, even though it's all the way in controller's model. And when it changes, that's when we're going to generate this text controller.current value. That's essentially how SwiftUI uses this with observation tracking on change. So when model.count changes, the computed property gives us a little nudge to say, hey, you wanted me to update whenever model.count changed. You say, well, maybe something magical is going on because controller is stored as an at state. So to make sure there's nothing funny going on, let's get rid of the at state. And I'll change the controller to be a let. And I'll have it be passed in from somewhere else. And so that means it can't be private anymore. And so here is my main view with the controller being something that gets passed into me. Let's pass it in from the app. Here's our app, our observable exploration app. And just like views, I tend to divide this into two pieces, one for the memory footprint and one to define the window group. So in the memory footprint, that's where we'll create our controller instance and store it as an at state, which is private. And when we create our main view, we pass our controller in. And this is more of the magic of observable. The main view is holding on to this controller that someone else passes it, and even though it tells the controller to increase its count and it gets back this controller current value, it never sees the model. There's no at state going on in main view, and it still is getting notified that it needs to change because model.count is observable and controller.current value depends on it. Now, if we had a deep view hierarchy, we might use environment instead. But in that case, we can't use controller without making some changes because if we pass controller into the environment, the controller has to be a reference type. It has to be a class. And so we have to change this struct to class, and it must be observable. Rather than do all that, I'm just going to use model directly. 
So back to my app, instead of creating an instance of controller, let's create an instance of model and pass that to main view using environment. So we're adding model to the environment of main view and all of its descendants. So let's modify main view to use this. Add environment model.self allows us to pull out the model instance from the environment and assign it to our var model. Now we're skipping the controller in this case, but I wanted to show you how the environment works. In this case, we just asked the model to increase count, and now we ask the text to display model.count.description. We're not using the computed property anymore. Next time, we're gonna create a little more distance, and we're gonna experiment with bindings.